You're listening to me, Paul Ross, with Santander. If you're experiencing financial difficulties, Santander have a range of online tools that can help you. Find out more at santander.co.uk as we offer you half a dozen free view film recommendations. Three from me and three from our Van Friday himself, Mr. Van Connor, one of the country's leading film critics. Six free view film offerings on the way after we say good morning and welcome back to Van Connor. Morning, Van. How's your week been, matey? And a good morning to you as well, Mr. Ross. You know what? I finally got to see a Marvel movie for the first time in a year and a half, so it's been a good week. And did you like Black Widow? What did you make of it? I thought it's pretty good. It's not one of the better ones. It's about on par with, I don't know, Doctor Strange or Captain Marvel, I would say. Okay, well, I like both of those, so I'm looking forward to seeing that one. And you've got some great movies for us to start us off, including the recent uh, sort of homage and hats off to the Beatles, BBC Four tonight, 11.25pm. Tell us about yesterday. I don't mean yesterday as in Thursday, I mean the movie. As I say, yesterday the weather was all over the place. Yeah. What could we possibly oh, brag about? Terrible. Uh, let's talk about the team up then between Danny Boyle and Richard Curtis. There's two names that were just destined to work together at some point. So Danny Boyle's directing, Richard Curtis is writing, and he's of course revisiting the classic, you know, rule Britannia cool factor that Richard Curtis has always made so succinctly his own this past 20 years or so. 30 years, I think, now since uh, wow. four weddings and a funeral, I think. Mm. Bizarrely, I think we're coming up to the 30th anniversary of that and this imagines a world in which a struggling musician a busker of sorts played by Himesh Patel sorry let's let's give the, the film its, its credit it, it claims to be introducing Himesh Patel anyone who'd been watching EastEnders for a decade knew who he was but he's introduced here eight years later he's the busker who happens to be the only man in the world who remembers the existence of the Beatles following a power cut and as he does he uses this situation to his advantage to effectively invent the music of the Beatles. He does does this, of course, by way of no other song than the cleverly titled Yesterday. I've got a clip for you of what happens when Ed Sheeran, of all people, becomes his celebrity mentor and they start trying to fix, because, you know, you don't fix something that isn't broken, they try to fix the Beatles, as Ed Sheeran suggests, you know, in a wonderfully wonderfully, uh, fitting clip. 11.25 tonight, BBC4, it's yesterday. Let me just give you this advice, right? Song title. I won't charge you a penny for it as well. Hey, dude. Um. Hey, dude. Hey, dude. Are you sure? He's right. That's that's so much better. Is he? Is it? Yeah, yeah. Hey, dude. Mm-hmm. Don't make it fast. Mm-hmm. Definitely going to be one of the best songs of the generation. Hey, wake up, dude. Wake up, wake up. Don't make it bad. Do 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 do. I thought that was a great film, actually, and Ed Sheeran is a revelation. He's so funny and self-deprecating, and I do love it when, not to give too much away, the chap who remembers the Beatles because he was blacked out when some massive power cut happened or something, when he tries to introduce one of his own songs, I say, oh, you've got, no, that's, that's, that one's not great. Now, let's go back to the other kind of stuff we were doing. So, very sweet film, that is. That's only 11.25 tonight on BBC4. I've gone for one of my favourites from the 1990s, actually launched the 1990s, starring a very young-looking indeed, Liam Neeson. It's on Great Movies, 9 o'clock tonight, Friday, written and directed by Sam Raimi. I think this film got in the, the Spider-Man gig. It's called Dark Man, but it's not based on a comic book, completely created by um, Sam Raimi. Looks more like a kind of 1930s Pulp Fiction type kind of character, like the Shadow. And basically, he's been hideously disfigured in an accident. He wants his revenge on the world of crime. He wants some form of life back. It's a dark film. It's a great film. It's uh, 9 o'clock tonight on Great Movies, and here's part of the trailer. They destroyed everything he had. All that he loved. Everything that he was. Now. Crime has a new enemy. And justice has a brand new face. I was afraid that you wouldn't want me anymore. Of course I still want you. The good news is that I know who's behind our little troubles of late. Finish it. He has the power to look like any man. They threw up both sons of witches! But he is unlike any man. I gotta tell you something about me. He's a cockroach. You think you're killing and he pops up someplace else. In the darkest hour. Julie, who's the real monster here? There's a light that shines on every human being. But 
one. From director Sam Raimi. Dark Man. I love that film. Have you seen that one recently, Van? It's a great old movie, that, isn't it? Not only have I seen it recently, I've watched the sequels recently, which are not bad, but they dropped the ball massively by replacing Liam Neeson for two and three. The third one, by the way, is called Die, Dark Man, Die, and it's absolutely it's just hilariously bad. And it's Arnold Vosloo, the villain from yeah, the Mummy great. movies, who takes over, yeah. Oh, great films. Okay, so that's the Dark Man, my recommendation tonight. Turning to tomorrow, and you've gone for the third film in a trilogy so far. I'm sure there might be more John Wick films. It's on Channel 4 tonight, 9 o'clock. Remind us about John Wick 3, or Chapter 3, Parabellum, which is a kind of ammunition, I think, isn't it? It is. We were, we're expecting this to be the end of the trilogy, I think, because we're conditioned to be to sort of see these things that way. And it, it turned out to end in such a way that we, we are now eagerly awaiting. I think they're starting production on the fourth one now. We've got a TV series with Ian McShane on the way as well that's going to spin off his character and the backstory of the famous hotel. But this is the, the third installment of the John Wick franchise in which the world's greatest assassin, Baba Yeager, the boogeyman, John Wick, the greatest killer that ever was. Who once killed a man with a pencil. Literally once, and we actually get to see that finally. We've been told that in so many of these films, and we now finally get to see that in the third one as an almost throwaway moment in which John Wick is now the target of the entire assassin world, who are out for out for his blood following the events of the previous film. And basically, all of the uh, the resources that he's had at his disposal in the series thus far all get turned inwards against him, and he's forced to turn to you know the underground community that sort of rule the streets, who are led by uh, Lawrence Fishburne. So there's a little Matrix reunion in there as well. You've got uh, Mark Cascos as the villain from On High, who's the master assassin equal to him. And it is basically literally John Wick versus the world. And, of course, he needs allies to help him in this quest. And he turns to none other than action veteran and, uh, it has to be said, a very good player in this one, Halle Berry, who joins the franchise as a former assassin herself with a very particular, specially trained kind of canine in her life and uh, he teams up with her in Morocco it's a whole new adventure with John Wick and Halle Berry and you know what it might be the it's easily the best of the sequels so far I have to say brilliant stuff you've got a clip for us I think so yeah this is John Wick and Halle Berry meeting for the first time in several years this is on uh, Channel 4 Saturday night at 9 o'clock perfect time for it out and time for midnight you'll have a blast here we go you do realise that I'm management now right I'm not service anymore, John, so I don't go around shooting people in the head. I'm not asking you to kill anyone. I just need you to get me to him. To who? Your old boss. You want to kill Barada? I'm not going to kill him. I just need to talk. What could he possibly give to you? Guidance. Oh, great dialogue there on that one. My recommendation Ooh. for, uh, well, it's kind of midnight tonight, creeping into Saturday morning. It's on Talking Pictures TV for midnight tonight, but it ends two o'clock in the morning. Directed by Nick Rogue, who's made some brilliant films like Performance and Don't Look Now. This, though, is David Bowie's Finest Hour, an absolute trip of a movie based on the Walter Tevis novel, who wrote The Hustler and uh, The Queen's Gambit three very different books to his credit. It's The Man Who Fell to Earth from the mid-1970s. I saw this at the Hearn Bay Odeon, and I liked it so much, it was a Saturday afternoon, raining over the summer, that I stuck around, kind of sunk down in the seat, and watched it again a second time for nothing. <laughs> it's a mad, great film. I'm not sure the quality of the print on Talking Pictures TV, but this is well worth a look. Don't expect easy answers, but it's one of the great, trippy science fiction films, I think up there with 2001, which I know sounds a bit overblown, but I love this film, oh. man. Yeah, I think, to be honest, it is a classic. And it's coming for uh, something of a, re a critical reassessment, a revisiting by a lot of people, and even found a new audience in the, in the last year following the passing of Nick Rogue, because it was one of those films that, between this and I think Don't Look Now, that yeah. got a lot of revisiting in the wake of Rogue's passing. And people who were kind of on the fence previous to his passing have now sort of fallen in line with, actually, this is an undisputed masterpiece. I think we should, this is due a reassessment, this is 
jewelry appraisal and Bowie's performance in it is terrific. I mean, recently we had the, the Bowie biopic Stardust, which takes place before this came out, but you do kind of watch that film and wish they had carried it through to this point. Well, also, of course, he said afterwards he was going through an absolute cocaine hell, self-inflicted, <laughs> making this film, and, and he wrote the album Station to Station around this time. It's a great movie. Midnight Tonight, mm-hmm. another great movie is my final recommendation for tomorrow, Sunday, and that is, of course, Drive from uh, 2011, 10 years old now, of course, Ryan Gosling, who got involved in kind of casting, he, he chose a director I think for this one. Kerry Mulligan, Ron Perlman, Brian Cranston's in it, who's brilliant, as is Albert Brooks, one of my favourite actors, and for Mad oh, yeah. Men, the voluptuous Christina Hendricks. Basically, it's an unnamed Hollywood stunt driver who's also involved as a getaway driver. It's a great modern neo-noir, very, very kind of downbeat film at times as well. Makes great use of his Hollywood connection. So, mm. won't give too much away, but that's 10.15 on Great Movies once again, Sunday night. If you've never seen it, folks, and you love crime movies and car chase movies, this is the one for you. And you're ending yeah. with a bit of superhero action for us on Sunday night on Film 4, then. I am. A franchise that I love and hate in equal measure is the X-Men franchise. It is simultaneously both the best and worst example of modern superhero entertainment. And one of the better ones is, of course, uh, X-Men Days of Future Past, which is on Sunday uh, night at 6.30. Perfect time for this as well. It is a 12A rated film, but it skews a little bit more family friendly than a lot of these superhero movies, even though this is a Sunday afternoon film that begins with a dystopian massacre. It has to be said this uh, <laughs> this uh, adapts the comic series the comic storyline of the same name which is one of the iconic superhero storylines and it, uh, it sees brian singer return which at that point was a celebration believe it or not like seven years ago it was actually a celebration that brian singer was returning to the x-men franchise having left it to go and do superman returns and obviously that didn't quite pan out but this sees uh, the x-men in the future having seen all the other mutants wiped out by a, a post-apocalyptic robotic threat known as the Sentinels, they find a way to effectively beam Wolverine's consciousness back in time (laughs) to the 1970s. So this then becomes a a sort of crossover sequel to both the prequel X-Men movies with James McAvoy and the original X-Men movies with Patrick Stewart. So you have the future characters interacting with the past ones, all by using Hugh Jackman as older Wolverine in the body of younger Wolverine, because that, it turns out, is the person of eternal you know regenerative healing you don't age and i've got a clip for you of what happens when hugh jackman wakes up in his own body in the 1970s with about 80 years of dystopian massacre memories in his head the sideburns still fit right in huge thanks to our mate <laughs> van connor he's back with us next friday rebecca perfect his partner in podcast podcast crime joins us on monday morning it's 6 30 it's sunday afternoon evening it's film four it's x-men days of future past cheers van hey what's going on Gwen, how are you? Get dressed. Hey, I don't know what's going on. What's going on is you're supposed to be guarding the boss's daughter, not screwing her. I didn't sleep with her. No. No. I mean, yes, I slept with her many times, but. Timmy! That wasn't me. That was the old me. I just got here like 20 seconds ago. Really? Yeah. And what happened to your clothes? My. Oh. Would you believe me if I told you I was sent here from the future? Probably not. It's me, Paul Ross, live until five. Up next, the Met Office with the weekend weather.